All right, so we have our basic definition or concept of chemical equilibrium. Now we're going to start um, applying this, and we're going to be looking at um, our equilibrium constants. And we want to just start out generally here. So we're going to um, look at a very, very generic um, equation. So we're going to say that we're going to take reactants A and B, and they're going to be in equilibrium with products C and D. Okay. And so our lowercase letters out front, these are the coefficients of our balanced chemical equation. And then the capital letters are just representing that chemical formula. So our equilibrium constant This gets the symbol of capital K. Remember, capitalization is very important in chemistry. So this is a capital K with a subscript of a lowercase c. Okay, there are actually a lot of different equilibrium constants, so this um, letter here can change. Uh, but most of the time, we're going to be dealing with what we call, we say, kc. And in general, what this is going to be equal to is it's going to be equal to our products over our reactants. And we're going to be using our equilibrium constants in order to uh, look at concentrations. Okay? Um, so our equilibrium constant expression for our general equation here, we would have Kc is equal to, we're going to put our products up in the top. So we have a square bracket. And the square bracket means a concentration in molarity. So we have capital C. That's our chemical compound there. And it's going to be raised to the power of that coefficient C. Okay, So big C in the brackets, little c up top or as a uh, superscript. Might be a little easier to see with um, the D's since the capital and lowercase look different. So those are our products, and then we're going to divide that by our reactants in the same fashion. So we have square bracket A raised to the A coefficient, and we have compound B in the square brackets raised to its coefficient. So this uh, square bracket here. Okay, that means a concentration in molarity. So remember, molarity is our more common concentration used in chemistry, um, and that's actually what we're going to be using for chapters 9 and 10 uh, exclusively. We're just going to be looking at molarity. So we're basically looking, we have our products over our reactants. Um, so sometimes it's easy to shorthand this, a capital P in square brackets for products and a capital R in square brackets for reactants, just as a, a quick reminder for you. All right, so some rules for writing KC expressions. First off, we want to uh, raise each of the products and the reactants to the power of their coefficient.
And it's especially important now in this chapter uh, that your coefficients are in their lowest common multiple. And I guess we should say whole number multiple. Okay, so it's very important that you reduce uh, your coefficients down. If they're all evens, divide them by two. If they're all multiples of three, you want to divide them by three. You want to get them to their lowest um, ratio, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, second rule, or next rule for writing KC expressions is um, you want to only include gas and aqueous phases. And the reason for this is because in an equilibrium, okay, we're wanting to look at the concentrations of our products and reactants. That's our goal of using these equilibrium constant expressions. We're looking for that concentration. Okay. We can only include gases and aqueouses because these are the only two phases that have a concentration that can change. Okay. Solids and liquids are ignored because their concentration is fixed. It does not change. So the way that I like to think about that is um, if you have a glass of water, okay, water is a liquid, how do you make that glass of water more concentrated? How do you get more water in the water? Well, usually what you'd say is, hey, if you want more water, you pour more water in, right? Except for the fact that if you pour more water in, now you're raising the volume and your concentration doesn't change. Okay, same thing for a solid. If you have a, um, say, a, a brick of lead, okay, how do you make that lead more concentrated? You can't compress it. Solids are, are incompressible, so you can't make it more dense. Uh, its concentration is fixed. It's, it's, not, it's constant. It, it can't change. So in an equilibrium, if we have a solid and a liquid, doesn't matter what's happening going back and forth in that reaction, the concentration of that solid or that liquid stays the same no matter what. Okay, the equilibrium does not depend on solids and liquids. However, with gases, we can compress gases, we can stick more gas into a space, uh, so that's going to change its concentration. For anything that's aqueous, uh, as long as we haven't hit our saturated solution, we can increase the number of solute per our solvent, so our concentration can go up. That's uh, exhibited by the fact that we can have different molarities. We can uh, prepare solutions of one molar, we can prepare solutions of ten molar. Okay, That concentration can change depending on where that equilibrium lies. Mm -hmm. So let's work through, actually let's get some more vocabulary. We have two different types of equilibrium that we can see. Okay, we have a homogeneous equilibrium and a heterogeneous equilibrium. A homogeneous equilibrium, this is an equilibrium that's going to be the same throughout. And when we're talking about the same throughout, we are referring to the phase. So all of the phases of the reactants and the products will be the same for a homogeneous equilibrium.
For our heterogeneous equilibrium, this is going to be all of our reactants and our products can be in different phases. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. So let's look at writing an equilibrium constant expression, and then we'll do a calculation with it. So we're going to look at, we have FeO as a solid, and we're going to combine that with carbon monoxide. We're going to form iron as a metal and carbon dioxide. So our equation is balanced as we've written it. So we can go ahead and write out our Kc expression. So we have Kc, it's our equilibrium constant expression. Remember, we're looking at our products divided by our reactants. That's our general um, equation there. So we want um, basically our products over our reactants. Okay, And remember, we don't want any solids or liquids. So the only two components that are included in our equilibrium constant expression are CO2 and CO. So we have CO2 in the numerator. CO in the denominator, and our coefficients here are ones, so we can write them in, but they're not needed. We have our co or our subscripts, excuse me, our superscripts of one there. Okay. Now, what type of a reaction or or a what type of equilibrium is this? Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? Well, hopefully. You have said that it's a heterogeneous because we have two different phases. So what type of equilibrium is this? This is heterogeneous. Excellent. So let's keep working with this example. Okay. And let's look at, we say we know some concentrations at equilibrium. So we know that at equilibrium, we have 0 0.12 molar carbon dioxide. And we have 0 0.02 molar carbon monoxide. And what is the value of that equilibrium constant? Mm 
So we want to know what is the value of Kc for this reaction given these equilibrium cons or these equilibrium concentrations. So basically what, what it's telling us is we have our concentration of CO2, carbon dioxide, is 0 0.12 molar, and the concentration of carbon monoxide is 0 0.02 molar. So if we use our Kc expression that we derived up here, we have Kc is equal to 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.02 and this is going to equal 6. Now normally I would say you know make sure you don't have any naked numbers units 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 important always include units uh, KC values are the first um, item that we have that are unitless. Okay, so Values of Kc are unitless. And we're, uh, we're going to have two different values um, that can be unitless in this class. Uh, Kc is one of them in this chapter. And we'll also, when we get into pH uh, in chapter 10, that is also unitless. These are the only two values that can be unitless. Okay? Otherwise, if you have a number, a numerical answer, it has to have units with it. If you don't put units with your number, I assume you mean fluffy bunnies. Okay? So KC values are unitless, so just listing your answer as 6 is perfectly correct.